Like, he's a visionary, you know? Kind of like my drawing of you, which is a banana taped on the wall. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie, and today we are back with another dun dun, dun, dun. mukbang. Woo. Woo. Guys, I'm so excited because Abyss is in a lota today. Oh wow, she wore a push-up bra today, sorry. That was like really it's in your okay. face. It's okay, nothing <laughs> taken, don't worry. I'm excited today because I was the last one to pick up these noodles. I don't know if it was the only one that was there. I'm pretty sure it's not, but these are newly released from Korea. They're the Puldag noodles, which is the quintessential nuclear noodles but they have a new flavor and this one is the well it says product corn we've got four packs of the nuclear corn noodles and we also have three I hope authentic elotes I got them from a restaurant they look grilled they look like they have you know Tell me if they're authentic or not, please. <laughs> Yelp said that they were, so I don't know. Leave it in the comments. And also, we're celebrating with this today because we have officially... You guys are amazing. I'm not going to go too into it, but I'm going to show you guys this clip right here. And Abyss is back. So with that, let's get started. It looks kind of like the carbonara flavor yeah. in terms of look, like the noodle size too. Did you try size it? Too. I have a ton of bind. How is it? It was good. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. mm. It is good, right? Very good. You know what this smells like? What? Isn't there a Cheeto that smells just like this? A Cheeto? No? Is there a corn flavored Cheeto? Oh my god. No, it's like a corn puff. Yes! You're talking about corn puffs. Is that not Cheetos? It tastes and smells like corn puffs. Exactly. It tastes like if you were to get nuclear noodles, mm -hmm. grind up some corn puffs, throw those corn puffs in, and mix it together. Wow. I hope this one's good. The last time I ordered elotes, it wasn't that good. Mm. Is it good? This one's so good. Mm hmm. Wow. I feel like the previous ones I had, they were too covered. You know, but this one I feel like you can taste the corn stuff. Mmm. Oh my god. Oh wow, that's good. <laughs> I bit off a piece of corn. Wow, this is the best one I've had so far. Holy cow. It's still kind of spicy. What the heck? This one's still spicy. The too. corn, right? Mmm. -hmm. With that being said, we're just jumping right into today's story because honestly, I don't want to talk about this story. It was not something that was just kind of on my radar. But then I ended up watching this movie and I haven't stopped thinking about it since. And so because of that, I feel like we need to have an open discussion in the comments and you need to leave it down below. Because you know how like after you watch a movie, the best part is actually talking to the people that you watch movies with and like talking to them about the movie. My fiance didn't want to talk to me. I'm here to talk to you guys. Essentially, this movie is called Parasite and it's a South Korean movie. And the way that it was filmed, like I heard a lot of, about, like I heard so much about it. I heard it was amazing. Some people said it's just too much. Some people said it's very weird. But overall, everyone said it leaves you thinking. And I was like, well, I feel like I don't have a lot of thoughts. <laughs> Could it really leave me thinking? Yes. So this story is essentially about... Spoiler alert. A spoiler alert, yeah. This story is essentially about economic differences, which sounds boring. It sounds like you, something you learn in like econ, but the way that they portray these two families, so it's centered around two different families. You've got the Parks on one side, the ultra wealthy, and then you've got the Kims on one side, the ones that don't have a lot of money. And so in the Kim family, the movie opens up with the Kim family, and we kind of get to understand like what kind of people these are. And it has, um, they have a dad, a mom, and a son by the name of Kevin, and a daughter by the name of Jessica. The way that they live is vastly different from even the way that most people would think that you live in Korea. So they have this apartment and it's a tiny little apartment complex and it's a sub-basement apartment. So that means that they see their eye to eye with street level. The windows that they have are literally ground level. If this is the road, this is their window and that's the only windows that they have. And so mm -hmm. it's a very interesting living. They start talking about how it's infested with bugs and all of these things and they, they their phones got shut off. They don't have Wi-Fi. And so you can tell that they just don't have a lot 
lot of money. And so what they are doing right now to make money is they're folding these pizza boxes. So this pizza girl will come every day and she'll pick up these boxes, bring it to the pizza shop, and they'll fill it with pizzas and sell it. So they don't make a lot of money. We're watching that happen when Min, he is a friend of Kevin, and it seems like he's from a more well-off family. He arrives and he brings this present. So they all sit down in this little living room and they open up the present and they lift up the box and then everyone's confused mm -hmm. because the gift is a very weird gift. It's a rock. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful rock, but it's just a rock. And so everyone's like, what the hell are we supposed to do with this rock? And Min is like, that is a scholarly rock. Scholarly rock? Yeah. What the heck a is that? A scholarly rock. Like that, that rock is educated or yeah. something? Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Like, is it a good looking rock or like mm -hmm. an exotic rock? Mm. He opens the scholarly rock and Min is like, yeah, that's my grandfather's. He has so many of these all around the house. You know, he says it'll bring you a lot of good fortune, a lot of good money. I've never seen it before. Isn't there something like that in China? You guys have the money tree? What else yeah. brings money? Oh, everything may brings money, boo-boo. <laughs> Did you know we have a god? Have a money god? You don't know? Mm-mm. We even have a holiday dedicated to that. Is we celebrate money god. Mm hmm Yeah. And all we do is please give us more money. <laughs> That's how you celebrate? Yeah. So like, like work, it. school is all called off and you guys just it's give me more money. It's during the whole Chinese New Year season. Mm -hmm. So you are off, I think. I believe. It's been so long. But yeah, you celebrate the money god. Isn't that cool? What do you guys say for Happy New Year in, in Korean? Just I don't know. You don't know? No, I don't know because anytime I go <laughs> because anytime I go to a New Year celebration in Korean like with a lot of Korean people, my mom will have me practice in the car. Sebok mani What does that mean? There are translation. Sebok like good luck. Pok is luck. Sebok new luck. Uh get it a lot. Receive a lot of it. Uh -huh. Like receive it. Uh, we say we say gongsi <laughs> meaning just give us more money. No, I wish you more fortune and more money. Oh, I thought you were gonna say, I wish you would give me more money. Yeah, no, <laughs> because no. same. <laughs> no, you wish each other. Like, oh, oh, like, okay. More money for you. Oh, and then yeah. You're like, I don't know why you me. always do that. You make me do that. Why? Like, that's how Chinese. Oh, no, like this. Oh. Chinese New Year. Like this? Yes. That's so interesting. So he's like, yeah, this is gonna bring you guys a lot of good fortune. And so the mom open, sees this gift and she's like, what the hell? What am I gonna do with this rug? You guys, it would have been more useful if you brought us food. Yeah. So that just kind of shows you like how much money that they didn't have. And so at this point, Min and Kevin, they decide to go to a little like corner shop, like a 7-Eleven and grab a bottle of soju and start drinking. Kevin at this point had failed a lot of college entrance exams, which are really, really competitive in Korea. And so he had been stalling. He hasn't been in school. He hasn't been working. Working. And Min, on the other hand, he's in college. And so Min is telling Kevin, like, you know, I think my family is going to send me abroad and I'm going to go finish my college degree overseas, which usually means you have a lot of money if you can do that in Korea. And so then Kevin's like, yeah, yeah, good for you, good for you. And he's just downing these drinks. And then Min is like, so I'd like to propose something to you. Min is like, you know, you, you know that I have like a side job. I'm an English tutor and I get paid really, really well from this family. And I, I tutor this high school girl. Her name is Tahi. And she's smart. She's nice. I mean, she's cute, but she's in high school. While I'm abroad, they're gonna be looking for a new English tutor. Do you want to be her tutor? And so Kevin's like, wait a second. I'm not even in college because typically the tutors go to a prestigious college, you know, mm -hmm. to tutor for a family like the Parks. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Their like all the today. Hey, Mango. And so then Min is telling Kevin, I think you should be her tutor. And so Kevin's like, what the hell are you talking about? I'm not even in college. Like, I don't even have a degree. Yeah. I, and then Min's like, well, you took the entrance exam for college how many times? Four times now? Kevin's like, yeah. And he goes, you know English better than anyone then. But he felt. <laughs> yeah, and so he's like, I guess you're right. Mm -hmm. And then so Kevin's like, why Why don't you just have one of your university friends just take over? Because I mean, they're in the same college as you. They probably are better than me. Mm -hmm. And he goes, 
do you really think I want a bunch of frat boys drooling over Tai? So it seems like Min, a college dude, likes this high school girl that he's tutoring and mm. he even confesses up to it. He's like, the minute that she gets into university, I'm gonna ask her to be my girlfriend. He's gonna say the minute that she turns legal, but whatever. <laughs> and so then Kevin's like, okay, I mean, I guess it'll work. And Min's like, this is how you do it. Get your sister, Jessica. She's really good at forging documents. Have her forge a document that you are currently enrolled in the best university in Korea. Here are all of your grades, this and this and this. And so they go into this like PC bug, which is like a computer room for the public and they start forging up these documents. He picks up no. his best suit that he has. I believe it's rented, I'm not sure. And he shows up at the Parks house. Now immediately you can see the contrast in the way that they live. The Parks in Korea, like these people are rich because they have their own lawn. They, they have their own house in Korea, which is massive because apartments go for like $2 million in Korea for a really good one. And so having your own house with a lawn and a buzzing system, like that's shmoney biz. And so he's buzzed in and the housekeeper opens the door and at first he doesn't even realize that they have a housekeeper and so he's like oh my god nice to meet you mrs park and the housekeeper's like i'm literally the housekeeper mrs park is inside you think she opens doors and so then they go inside and she's saying you know the architect that built this house he moved away everything's perfection like blah 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 and kevin is just so entranced that these people have this much money Mm -hmm. And so he meets Mrs. Park and they sit down and she's a little strange. Like she's not your stereotypical, like going into the movie, I thought this was going to be like a very stereotypical, like rich family. They're evil. They're just gross, you know, and they're just so like rude and just, uh, right? But mm -hmm. she seems a little weird, but not really rude. Maybe a little crazy. A little crazy? Like you or... <laughs> What kind of crazy? Mm -mm -mm. Are they evil or are they good? It doesn't seem like they're evil mm -hmm. at all. She, se she doesn't seem like crazy. She just seems kind of naive almost. You find out that her husband is like this very big tech dude, right? And he makes a ton of money. Mm -hmm. And he's, he's very seemingly somewhat nice, not as nice as her. And they too have two kids, a daughter and a son. Now, mm -hmm. you know, she's asking him like, how are you good at teaching? You know, we loved men. Are you just as good? I mean, I would love to sit in for your first tutoring session if that's okay. Mm -hmm. And so then Kevin's like, okay, that's fine. They go upstairs to Tai's room and he meets her for the first time, the daughter. We're gonna call her Daisy, okay? Uh -huh. And so Daisy sits down and they start doing these questions. She's going through this workbook and she's on question 24 or something and she keeps like, she keeps hesitating and the mom is watching. And so Kevin looks at her and goes, do you think that you got the right answer for question number 22? And she goes, I don't know. And he mm -hmm. goes, so you think you got the wrong answer for question number 22? She's like, I, I don't know. I don't know. And he's like, well, you messed up. And she goes, okay, so I should go back to question number 22. And then he grabs her wrist. And uh -huh. so you're like, oh my God, this is really weird. Uh -huh. And so then he's holding his fingers on her pulse. Uh -huh. And so he goes, it's not about getting the question wrong. It's about keeping the momentum of your test. After you passed question number 22, you started stalling and hesitating and questioning every answer that you put down. So then you lost the momentum because most exams are timed. That's so deep. Yeah, but it's also so much bullshit because you're an English tutor. <laughs> it's like, um, are you here to teach me English or are you Tony Robbins? You know, what are you? <laughs> I need to know. Uh -huh. And so then he's like, it doesn't matter. If you think you messed up on question 22, you have to just keep pushing through. The minute that you start second guessing yourself, you're gonna fuck up the whole test. And so then the mom hears this and she's like, oh my God, I love it. Uh -huh. So he's hired with the same amount of money that Min was getting. But mind you, he's not in college, which doesn't matter. But like, yeah. he lied about being in college. And so then they're walking down the stairs. You know, the housekeeper's bringing them fruits and all of that. And he sees this artwork framed in the living room. And this artwork is very weird. Honestly, if I could explain this artwork, it is probably one of those things that you'd read on the news that it sold for like a million dollars. And everyone's like, oh my God, people these days. Like the banana taped on the wall. And so it kind of looks it's like kind of like your drawing, right? <laughs> Kind of like my drawing of you, which is a banana taped on the wall. <laughs> and so then he sees the painting and Mrs. Park is like, oh, do you like the painting? Mm -hmm. He's like, I do. She's like, my son drew it. 
Mm-hmm. And he sees his little son. He's like going around throwing little arch bow and arrows at everyone. And we're just going to call him freaking Jason. I don't know his name. I don't remember. And so Jason's really, really young. He's younger than Daisy. And so she's like, yeah, I think he's a genius. Like we've been through so many art teachers because look at that. Like he's part of the fourth dimension. Like he just knows, like he's a visionary, you know? Have you ever heard of like, um, what's that? P- Pablo Picasso? Like I think he's the next Pablo. And so then this dude who had just gotten hired from this very wealthy family is just like, absolutely. And he's standing there and he's like, you know, that's the thing with adults. When they don't see that, like they're just gonna try to like sh- bring him down. They're not gonna let him shine because that is talent. It's something that we can't even understand because he's that smart. Honestly, he's speaking some truth though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but also, like when someone is saying that about your kid, you are either too scary or you got too much money. Because I don't think I would ever say that about someone's kid's artwork. I'd be like, it's cool. Yeah, it's cute. Haha. <laughs> is it Crayola? Yeah, it looks good. You know? It's better than mine for sure. (laughs) Yeah, but I don't think I'd be like, he sees into the fourth dimension. He's got a sixth sense, you know? Like, artiste. Like, it's just weird. And so she's like, exactly! That's how I've been feeling! Oh my god! Like, I'm so glad someone sees my son the way that I see my son. And he's like, absolutely. And so then she's walking Uh him out and she's like, thank you so much. I'm so excited for these weekly lessons. Uh And then, you know, he's like, By the way, now that we're talking about art teachers, you were mentioning that your son can't really keep an art teacher because they don't really understand his style and they keep trying to teach him like methods. And she's like, Mm -hmm. yeah. And he's like, oh man, I I knew someone. Um, Man, what's her name? A friend of mine went to school with her in America. Um, Jessica? Was her name Jessica? Um, she's, wow, she went to, I think she studied in America, she came back to Korea, and now she's, like, the most in-demand art teacher, like, she does art therapy, even, I mean, yeah, I, I mean, I've never really talked to her, but I've heard amazing things art about her. Art therapy? Yeah, mind you, Jessica is his sister, by the way, and so, she's like, oh, really? It, it, she, he, she studied in America? Oh, pe- people want her as their art, t- okay. Is there any way you could reach out to Jessica just just so I could meet her? You know, that that'd be amazing. And so then he's like, I mean, I I could try. I feel like her schedule's pretty booked, but I mean, I could try. I'll mm-hmm. put in a good word. And so then she's like, "Thank you. That would mean so much." I see why you say she's naive. Mhm. Just like that. Just like that. Damn. I feel like that's a thing in Korea, though. What? Bullshit? No! Uh um, Like, you have this, like, crazy jealousy over tutors. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Same for China. Mm. Yeah, like this, like in in mm-hmm. China, you know, I'm sure probably the same. Like parents can will pay any money for for their kids to get ahead. Than yeah, others. it's crazy. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Is there a lot of college bribing in China? Okay, why'd you laugh? I have no idea. <laughs> so then the next day, they show up at the house again. And this time, Kevin comes to do his English lesson for Taihi or Daisy. And Jessica's there. Now, this is the moment you realize that Jessica is literally his sister. They're acting like they've never met each other. Mm. And so then outside, they ring the buzzer and they're like practicing. She's like, my name is Jessica. I studied at uh, Illinois University, blah, 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 blah. And they go inside. Now, the mom sits down with Jessica. And Jessica's aura, she's just, like, even when she's not playing this persona for this rich family, she's just... She's a very like cool person like she seems like nothing really bothers her so she walks in she never smiles she says hi she sits down with the mom and the mom starts asking all these questions like where did you study and she doesn't really respond a lot and then she looks at a painting and she goes anyways I'm gonna go do I'm gonna go meet your kid yeah. and so then the mom's like well it's your first time meeting him I'd love to be in the room and she goes no and the mom <laughs> is like, what, no she's like no I don't do lessons with parents and so she's like 
okay and so she goes alone in the room with the son and they start drawing and the mom's going crazy she just wants to know what's going on in that room she's like telling the housekeeper go bring them some fruit go bring them some fruit and then tell me what's going on right and the housekeeper's like okay so she's cutting up some fruit and right as they're about to go upstairs they're already downstairs doing their lesson mm -hmm. and even when they see him leave like the lesson is over and Jessica tells the son the little Jason the one that was previously throwing bow and arrows around the house at Kevin he literally gets up from his seat and goes thank you so much and leaves. So this kid is suddenly acting very, very well behaved. So the mom is confused. So Mrs. Park sits down and she goes, what, what happened? What happened? Right? Mm -hmm. what, what did he say? Did he do anything? And so then Jessica looks at the mom and says, has he experienced any trauma in the past? Mm -hmm. And she starts screaming. The mom literally starts screaming like, ah! <laughs> and then she doesn't even go into like what happened and she's like something did happen when he was really really young mm -hmm. and Jessica's like well I can see it in his artwork and then she's like well did he did he say something to you and Jessica goes no but as you can see she starts bullshit I, mean, I don't know if it's bullshitting, but like, sounds like bullshitting. And so she's like, as you can see, on the lower right side of all of his paintings, there's always some sort of darkness, whether it's a dark brown or a black or a dark, dark blue. And that's usually a sign of schizophrenia. Okay, that's absolutely bullshit now that I think about it. Okay, a sign of schizophrenic tendencies. And so she's like, what? Is he schizophrenia and she starts freaking out and she goes you know but it looks like it's early it looks like it's not fully developed there's just some of it there and so she's like what do i what do i do i knew something was wrong i knew his trauma messed him up and mm -hmm. so then the art teacher goes i can no longer provide art lessons for your son and she's like oh, what do you mean and she goes i can only do art therapy for your son which is a much higher rate because now it's therapy but with art sounds like God damn, and she so the, is good. Yeah, and so the mom is I like, I will give her my money too. Yeah, and so the mom's <laughs> like, of course, anything. Yeah, art therapy, whatever you want to do. <laughs> and so then she's like, okay. And she ups and leaves. Now at this point, the husband is walking in as she's walking downstairs. And yep. this is the first time that you meet Mr. Park. He's a dashing guy in a suit, very wealthy. And he walked in with his driver. And he said, oh, the driver can drive you home. It's already dark outside. He doesn't need it. Like you shouldn't be walking outside in this yep. you know, darkness. And so then Jessica gets into the back of the car and he starts driving. And he's like, okay, where do you live? Like I'll take you home. And she goes, no, it's too far. Just take me to this station, this yeah. train station. And he's <clears> like, no, 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 it's okay. Like, I mean, I'm already off the clock like i can just take you to your house and it didn't seem creepy it was very like polite right, yeah. yeah and so then she's like no i said i want to go to this station and he goes are you sure like if it's not inconveniencing me and she goes i said i'm meeting my boyfriend at this station so then he goes uh -huh. oh okay okay yeah that's fine uh -huh. and so then as they're driving you see this really weird thing happen is jessica in the middle of the dark in the back of the car she takes off her underwear <laughs> And so then you're thinking, wow, I mean, I guess the driver is good looking, but like, I thought you were meeting your boyfriend. I'm so confused. And then she takes it off and I thought she was going to like slingshot it to the front seat. She Honey. did not. <laughs> she didn't. Who even does that? Anyways, she didn't, but she tucked it under the seat. Like she's in the back seat, but she tucked it under the seat in front of her. And so you're kind of wondering what is the purpose of that? And so then she goes back home and her and her brother are high-fiving because they both got hired and they're both getting paid for jobs that they don't know how to do from this very, very wealthy family. Uh -huh. And so they're excited and they're talking to their parents and she tells the dad like, hey, you know how to drive a Mercedes. And so the dad goes, I mean, I, I know how to drive well. And so then the next scene, you see them at a Mercedes dealership and he's learning all the buttons. This oh, is the music. This he's is the, be the driver. Yeah. And so then you're trying to think how, right? And the daughter goes, I already planted something. And so then you cut ah. back to the parks and Mr. Park, he's on his way to work and he drops one of his papers because he has a driver. He's very fancy. He works in the car. I don't know how he doesn't get motion sickness or whatever. And so he drops one of his <laughs> papers and it falls. And so he goes to grab it when he sees this unknown object. And he grabs his pen and picks it up and it's undies. And then he slingshot. And <laughs> then he slingshot. I'm just kidding. <laughs> like what the hell is this but he doesn't say anything so he just tucks it away into his briefcase Whoa. and brings it to work to slingshot <laughs> i'm just kidding <laughs> he brings it home okay he doesn't say anything that was the point and then he rushes home to the uh -huh. wife right and so mrs park is sitting there and she's just i don't know being rich right uh -huh. and so then he's like honey honey i need to talk to you and so they sit down and then she's like what, what, what? and he's like look inside so she looks inside and she starts screaming again she's like oh my god what is that and she puts on these gloves and she's like oh 
Oh, what <laughs> is that? And they're both looking at it and they're like, what's wrong with our driver? And he's like, you don't think that's weird? And she goes, what do you, what do you mean? And he goes, that's weird. And she goes, I mean, I, I guess. Why, why is he doing it in the car? We pay him so much money, he could have gotten a hotel room. That's weird. Maybe he has a thing for cars. And he goes, that's not the point. Who forgets something so important such as undies? That's true. You know, okay, That's you, true. you leave, he said, you leave a hair, fine. You leave an earring, fine. So but when fake. you're reclothing, <clears throat> you don't forget the undies. Yeah, it's planted. No. Oh, yeah. And then she goes, That's so true. Uh -huh. That's weird. And yeah. he goes, You know what kind of girl forgets their undies? And she goes, What kind of girl has been telling me, right? The girl that wears two undies. <laughs> <laughs> so, what kind? Tell me. And he goes, the kind that's drugged up. She goes, no! And he goes, yeah. And so then she goes, imagine if someone ever found any drugs in your vehicle, your career, over. And so then he's like, exactly. She's just like that in, in the movie. I swear to God. Just like that. I swear to God. She's actually kind of cute. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say it's a very refreshing change from the typical Korean ajumas that are like, how much do you want to get away from my son? Mm -hmm. You know? And then she's like, ah! You know? <laughs> it's just a little different. And so at this point, the driver ends up getting fired. Now, they don't fire him for something like this. And so eventually they get fired. They're talking to Jessica. And Jessica's like, oh, my old family friend had an amazing driver. I forget his name, but he's really good. He's old. And you want people who are older to drive you because they're less jerky and stuff. And so then, you know, they're like, okay, bring him in. Guess who comes in? The motherfucking dad, okay? And so then the dad is doing a test drive with the Mr. Park. So he picks him up from work and he's really good. He's smooth talking, you know, and he's really good at knowing the navigations. He doesn't even need to use the navigation system. And he's holding a cup of coffee in the back and none of the coffee is spilling. And I guess that's his test. I don't freaking know. Literally, I'm driving and like I have a closed water bottle and it's still flying into the seat next to me. I don't understand how that works, but whatever. And so he ends up getting hired. God damn these people are good yeah now right at that point their next thing they can't just be happy with three people having jobs they want the mom there but what capacity <clears throat> could the mom be there for the housekeeper mm. and so they do some digging they learn that the housekeeper has been there since before the parks she was the housekeeper of the architect who built and lived in this house and so then he was like oh i recommend this housekeeper she's been amazing so mm. she's been there for such a long time and she lives there she, i believe she's a live-in housekeeper or something like that yeah. or like part-time lives there mm. and so then they're like how do we get rid of her she knows this house inside and out she even almost when the parks are gone acts like this is her, her house she takes baths in the park's master bedroom you know and she's just doing the most and so then kevin is having another lesson with daisy which by the way they start having like a small little relationship which is really illegal and creepy but anyways and then she's like eating the fruit that the housekeeper prepared she's like man i hate these fruits i wish i could eat some peaches and so then he's Ooh. like yeah <laughs> i know dirty talk <laughs> and so then he's like why don't you just ask the housekeeper to bring you some peaches and she goes we are not even allowed to have peaches in the house. I thought he was gonna, you can't eat mine. <laughs> <laughs> this is where it gets really interesting. The housekeeper is very, very allergic to peaches. And so they decide that they're going to plant peach fuzz all over her. So what's the point of this? She's gonna have an allergic reaction. She's not gonna die, hopefully, thankfully. That's not what they're trying to do. But she's gonna have an allergic reaction. And so as she's having this allergic reaction, they follow her to the hospital. They snap a picture. The driver snaps a picture, a selfie at the hospital waiting room with the housekeeper on the back on the phone. Yeah. And so then he goes to pick up Mrs. Park and goes, you know, I just have a quick question. I feel like I've seen her before. Have you seen this lady in the back? Is that your housekeeper? And she's like, yes, that is. Mm -hmm. And then he's like, that's so weird. I, I went to the hospital today to get my annual checkup and I, I heard her in the waiting room talking to her sister about how she has tuberculosis. And Mrs. Park is like, tuberculosis? And she starts screaming again. And then he's <laughs> like, I mean, I just don't know. Obviously, I wouldn't have said anything because... You know, I don't like to gossip, but you have young children in the house, and if she has tuberculosis, that's very contagious. These? Mm hmm. <laughs> they're just getting full left and want right, huh? So they fired her. Mm hmm. Just like that, replaced it with the mother. With the mother.
Now, at this point, it gets interesting because you have this entire family working for the same household, but nobody is related to each other. They all act like they don't know each other. Mm -hmm. But there's one thing that the little boy, Jason, he picks up on. Mm -hmm. He goes and he smells someone and he says, You smell, you smell like, you smell like Jessica. Right? And the parents are like, what are you saying? Just stop. And he goes, they all have the same smell. The little boy knows yeah. that. And so it is That's kind so of creepy. creepy. So then you are like, wow, maybe this boy is onto something, okay? Maybe he is smart. And so then they proceed throughout all of this. And now it's the boy's birthday. So the family <laughs> decides. Now, this is what's very interesting up until this point. It seems like the rich family is very gullible. But it's weird because the way that it's set up is just weird. Like, I thought going into this, I would hate the rich family. Mm -hmm. You know? But it didn't seem like they're mean at all. Mm. They just seem weird. They don't seem evil. They just seem kind of weird. But they decide that they're all going to go camping for the son's birthday. And so they pack up all of their stuff. The housekeeper's there alone. And they say, okay, just watch the house. We'll be back. And so then they leave. Now, at this point, the mom invites all of the Kims. You're talking Jessica, Kevin, the driver, the dad. And they're all drinking in the house, in the living room. Like, just acting as if this is their house, you know? Mm. And Kevin's like, this is actually going to be my house one day because I'm going to marry Dave. And so they're all like laughing and snacking and they, you know, they push bottles aside because they're pranking each other and they're, they're, there's like they just created a massive mess and yeah. it's raining. And then all of a sudden, while it's thundering and raining, they hear a ding dong. <laughs> and they go, oh, they're, sh they're not back though. Okay. Ding dong. Okay. And so then they run up to the intercom and they have a camera to the front gate. Yeah. And it's the old housekeeper. And they all get shocked. Now, mind you, the old housekeeper, she got replaced last. So she's seen the driver, she's seen Kevin, and she's seen Jessica. Mm. And she knows them as the English tutor, the art tutor, and the driver. She doesn't know that they're related. Mm. Now, if anyone finds out that they're related, then they're screwed. This Park family would be like, first of all, y'all are lying, right? And so she's like frantically calling, right? Won't stop. And she looks crazy out in the pouring rain. And so the new housekeeper, she picks up and she says, hello. And she's like, I'm the old housekeeper. And she goes, can I come in? I forgot I left something in the basement. I left something in the basement. Mm. And she almost seemed very sympathetic. Like she's out in the rain. She looks miserable. She just lost her job, right? And so then for some reason, she has like a weird twinge in her heart and she lets her in. The rest of the family goes and hides. Mm. And so she's like, what'd you forget? And so they go down into the basement and she's like, do you want to come with me? And she's like, no, I don't want to come with you, you creepo. <sighs> and so then she goes, okay, I'll just be right back. And she goes down into the basement and you just start hearing this like grunting and moving and pushing and shoving and you're like, what the hell? And so then the family is listening from the shadows and it's like, go, go, like telling the mom, like, go, what is she doing? So she's like, okay. And so she goes down to the basement and she sees this lady pushing on this bookshelf. She's like, what are you doing? Are you insane? And she goes, can you help me? Can you help me pull it? And they pull it open and suddenly there's a door. There's a door? A concrete door. Behind the bookshelf? Yeah. And cool. so then she opens up the bookshelf without like saying anything. Door. Yeah. She opens up the secret door and starts running down the stairs. There's so many stairs going down. And so oh the new housekeeper shit. is like, this is creepy. And so she starts running after her. Like, are you about to go play hide and seek down there? What the hell are you doing? And at this point, the family is like listening and they're following into the bunker, like just listening. And so they're all three standing there listening in the stairs. And she's like, oh my God. And they're all like, what? And they see that this is a full blown bunker and there's someone living there. It's the, the old housekeeper's husband is living there. And she starts crying and she opens up her bag and she's feeding him food. Because it's been a couple days since she's left this house and she got fired and she needed to feed the husband. Oh, then nobody knows that he's down nobody there. Nobody knows that he's down there. And so she what? goes on to tell the story to the new housekeeper because the new housekeeper is about to call 911. She's like, I'm about to call 911, you know? And so then she says, no, please don't. So the architect that created this house, he created a bunker because a lot of these rich people in Korea, <clears throat> they have these bunkers because a lot of rich people in Korea, they do shady business. And so if your creditor <laughs> comes by, you know, someone, suddenly you go bankrupt and people are coming to try to, I don't know, get money from you. Your, your relative comes over, you don't like them. You go into the bunker, end of the world, bunker, you know? It's just this crazy bunker. Now, when the architect sold the house, he was almost embarrassed because everyone knew he built the house to tell people, I put in a bunker just in case, you know? It just kind of comes off like Looney Tunes. Mm. And so then the, the real estate agent didn't even know there was a bunker. And so when they sold the house, the Parks, the family that moved in, mm -hmm. they didn't know didn't there was know. a bunker. And so she had been staying in this house. She transferred from the architect to the Park family. And she put her husband down there because their business had collapsed and they had borrowed a lot of money from loan sharks. Now, loan sharks in Korea are different from, I don't know, Chase Bank, okay? Because what they do is they'll beat the sh-
out of you and maybe chop off a finger or two until you give some money back. And so the, they'll find you. So this is his way of hiding. And so she'll bring That's him food crazy. every day, right? Because none of the Park family really goes into the basement. It's just storage. And if they need something out of storage, they tell the housekeeper. Wow. Yeah. And so she's like, please don't say anything. I will give you money every single month if you could just bring him food twice a week or something like that. And she's like, no, I'm not doing that. And she's like, please, once a week, once a week. He doesn't need to eat that much. Just whatever you want. Throw him some food. You know, just once a week. Open the door. Throw it down the stairs. We don't care. Please, 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 please. And she's like, absolutely not. I'm about to call 911. And then all of a sudden, you hear the family slip and fall and tumble down the stairs. <sighs> the dad, the son, the daughter. Yeah. Or otherwise known as the English teacher, the art teacher, and the driver. Okay. And so at this point, the old housekeeper is like, what the f***? And she grabs her phone and she starts recording them. And they've all fallen onto this concrete ground. And the son is like, oh my god, dad, like, what the f***? Why'd you push me, you know? And so she's like, dad? And they're all like, huh? And so she records this and she's like, I knew something was weird when everyone in this house started getting replaced one by one by one. And so she says, I'm going to send this to the Park family. And so then the, the family's like, no, 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 don't. And so she has the messages is open. She has the, like, the freaking video there. And she's like, about to hit send. And they're like, no, we can work something out. We can work something out. And so they go upstairs and the four of the Kim family, they're standing there in the corner in timeout, which we call Mante which means you hold your hands like this and on your knees. Oh, there's a name for that? Yeah, you had to do this in school back in the day. I don't know, I didn't go to it's school. It's called Monse? Yeah. And so they're doing that in the corner and she's like holding the phone, you know, massaging her husband that's out of the bunker for the first time in four years. And she's like, I could just hit send and all of you guys are finito, done, out of this house and I'll have my job back. When all of a sudden, one of the Kim family members, they slide under the couch and push it. So both of them fall off the couch and the phone goes flying and they start wrestling for the phone and they start knocking each other out for the phone and eventually they start fighting it out. Everything happens and the dude, the the dude that's been in the bunker, bunker dude, right? Mm -hmm. He ends up back in the bunker. I don't know if he retreats or whatever. A lot happens and they start fighting each other. The old housekeeper gets pushed down the stairs, literally kicked. She's running up the stairs and the new housekeeper kicks her down the stairs. And so it seems that she has a concussion. And then all of a sudden they get a call and it's the family. They're coming back from the campsite and they want food. So cook some food, housekeeper, is what they said. But very nicely, they said they're eight minutes away. And so the rest of the family, they're hiding, right? You've got the daughter, you've got the son, and the driver guy. They're hiding under the coffee table of the couch. And so it's just a complete sh show. The details of this don't really matter. All you need to know is that the lady, the old housekeeper, has a massive, massive concussion, and she gets tied up in the bunker, as well as the her husband gets tied up in the bunker as well. At this point, the housekeeper keeper is making some food and the family comes back they said the campsite overflowed and this is when you realize the trauma of the kid you know the, the housekeeper is like oh. you know you do a lot for your son and mrs park is like yeah I, I try because he had an incident when he was young and she starts getting emotional and she goes you know when he was young it was his birthday and we had this big birthday party mm -hmm. and at night he decided to go into the kitchen because he was hungry mm -hmm. and he just wanted his cake and so he opened the fridge alone and was sitting on the floor eating this cake and then he looked to the right and he saw a ghost come out of the basement some very creepy looking man oh my god yeah and we searched the entire house i think that's why we you know he sees a different dimension he sees ghosts and things that we can't see and it was the bunker man and he was so shocked that mm -hmm. he had a seizure at that young age Oh my gosh. And they only have about 15 minutes to bring him to the nearest hospital before a kid might die from something like that or have really lasting damage, you know? So ever since then, you know, his birthdays are just really, really important to us. Dang. So does the parents believe the kid that they saw something or? I don't know. Maybe because he had a seizure. Hmm. During all of this, the family is hiding under the coffee table. Mm. They haven't been able to leave. And the husband and the wife, Mr. and Mrs. Park, they start talking on the couch, literally in front of the coffee table. And it's raining outside. It's pouring. Mm -hmm. And the husband goes, it smells like the driver in here. And everyone gets alarmed under the coffee table. And she goes, what do you mean? What smell, the wife? And he goes, I don't know. Something about him smells. And so she's like, huh? And he goes, you haven't smelt it? It's like... It's like an old radish smell. And so she goes, no, I haven't smelt it. And he goes, I mean, I like him. He doesn't cross the line, you know, mm -hmm. too much. But his smell just always comes into the back seat. And it just, 
it's so strong. It smells so bad, right? And、mm. she goes, I've never smelt it. And then they <laughs> proceed to have regular conversations about other stuff. And then finally, the family finds an out, and they sneak out, okay? And they go back home. They run home in the pouring rain, right? And once they get home, they realize that most of the city has been flooded by the rain. Mm. And as they're approaching their house, it gets worse because a lot of the sewage pipes in their little town had burst. They realized that they left their window open, and they live subground. Oh my gosh, their house is filled with crab. Yeah. And、oh. so they run into the house, and their house is filled now not just with rainwater and flood water, but sewage water.、Oh. You know, it just got really, really bad. Most of their stuff is gone. Like the water at one point is up to here for them. You know, and they're going around trying not to get electrocuted by you know the outlets and things. They're trying to grab their valuables,、oh、and then you see them in this gymnasium, and they're all laying there, and there's a bunch of people there. It's like a little makeshift shelter, and they're talking, and the the son says, "Hey." Hey, you know how you trapped the two people in the bunker, the the housekeeper and the her husband. Oh, the dad trapped、yeah. them there. And the dad goes, "Yeah, I tied them up, but I mean, what do we do, right?" And he goes, "Do you have a plan?" And the dad goes, "No, I don't believe in plans because nothing ever goes according to plan." And so then the son goes, "Don't worry, Dad, I'm gonna handle it." And so you're just kind of left thinking, "What is he talking about?" Hmm. So they can't let them out anymore because they will tell on them. Mhm.、Oh. This is really creepy. Mhm. Damn. And then they fall asleep. Now, early in the morning, they each get a text, right? And it's all from the family, right? And they say, "Hey, come over. We're doing this party for Jason's birthday. It's gonna be a makeshift party, right?" So they invite the English teacher to come as a guest, and they invite Jessica to come as a guest. And they call the driver, the dude, and they say, "Hey, we're gonna pay you overtime. You know, we just want you to go pick up some stuff with Mrs. Park for the party. Some cakes, some wine, some food, right? We're gonna have people cooking." It'll be great, and so they're all just kind of like they don't want to go to this party because they had just lost their entire house, but they can't even say anything,、oh. and so they go okay, and so they all show up. Now this is where you start to see lots and lots of tension. Up until this point, it was more like they were getting one over on the rich family, so there wasn't as much tension. Just like oh, I hope they don't get caught. But then now it was very tangible tension because the driver is driving Mrs. Park in the back, and she's talking on the phone, calling all of her friends like, come over, it's just a small party. Party, nothing serious, you know. She's picking wine. She's talking, calling more people at the grocery store, and he's just pushing this cart, looking miserable, like he just lost his house. And they get into the car, and they're on their way home. Now, this is, I think, where the trigger point was for him, right? The driver was. She's on the phone, and she's relaxing in the back, and she's looking outside. And on the phone, she says. Oh my gosh! Like I'm so glad it rained because now the clouds are so pretty. Like the sky looks so pretty、okay. since the rain had passed. Okay. And you see him look really upset because what was just rain for her that resulted in pretty clouds was complete devastation for the other side of the city. A lot、for、of、him. those people lost their house, like their apartments. For him, other people. That's why there were so many people at the shelter. Yeah. But for her, it's just like oh, pretty sky after rain. You know, yeah, and so it was、yeah. just this really weird moment,、yeah. and because he had overheard their conversation last night about how Mr. Park thinks that he smells,、mm. she he's watching her in the little mirror, and she goes like this, and she starts pulling down the window because、mm-hmm. he smells, and so you see him just frowning and proceeding to drive back to their house. Now, once they get there, the dad, Mr.、Offended? Park. It seems so, yeah.、Okay. And so Mr. Park, when he's there, he starts dressing up like a. Like a cultural appropriation outfit. I don't know. He starts dressing up as something, okay?、Mm-hmm. And so then he makes the driver dress up as it, and they're hiding in the bushes. And they go, okay, so Jessica's gonna come out with the cake, and then we're gonna surprise her and attack her, like not attack her and steal the cake, and be like, oh no, you gotta catch us to get the cake, right? And then all the little boys will come running, like, no, don't steal the cake, right? And so then the driver's standing there, just like looking, like, okay, okay. And then he's like, why do you not want to be here? And he's like, no, it's fine, right? He looks upset.、Mm-hmm. And so then Mr. Park is like, we're. Paying you overtime anyway, so they just both look at each other very tense and keep hiding in the bushes. Now at this point, Kevin goes into the bunker and he has this rock with him, the rock that his friend gave him in the beginning.、Oh, and he's walking down the, the stairs,、rock. and it seems that he has the intention to kill the couple with the money rock. What? 
But what he didn't know is the night before, because the old housekeeper had a concussion, yeah. she ended up passing away because her fall was really bad. And they were both tied up. And the husband saw his wife die and couldn't really help. And so somehow he untied himself or she helped him or something like that. And, um, and then the husband was waiting for someone to come down. And so Kevin doesn't know this. He comes down with the rock, sneaks in, and is about to see the housekeeper laying down. And is getting closer and closer. And then all of a sudden he feels something around his neck. And he's dragged and tied up to the other side of the bunker. And somehow a big fight ensues. He makes it up. He runs up the stairs. And then he trips and falls and drops the rock. And the husband, the housekeeper's husband, grabs the rock and slams it on his head twice. And so then he kills Kevin. Well, puts the rock on Kevin twice, like on the head, like really hard. So you presume that Kevin's dead. And then he goes up. Now everyone's having this really cute party upstairs. It's the middle of the day. And he has blood everywhere, this guy, because he got bloody from this fight. And you see him and he starts walking up the stairs and he grabs a knife. And he starts walking into the party and it's outside. Now at this point, Jessica's bringing the cake to the middle of the party and everyone starts screaming because they see this guy that is just bloody and weird. And everyone's like, what the hell? And he pushes through the crowd of people and stabs Jessica. So he wants to kill this family because they're the reason uh, yeah, 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 that yeah. everything went to sh right? It's yeah. not even about the Park family. It's about the Kim family. And so he stabs Jessica. And then the mom, the new housekeeper, sees this. That's her kid. Nobody knows, but that's her kid. She starts freaking out. She tries to grab stuff to fight him with. You know, she's getting, like, stabbed at, you know. Kevin's downstairs in the basement, probably dead. The dad pops out, the driver, and is like, oh my god, no. And then all the while this is happening, the young son, Jason, he faints again because it's the same guy he saw four years ago. The bunker dude. The bunker dude. Holy but this holy. time he's going around stabbing people on his birthday. And so he oh faints God. again. And so Mr. and Mrs. Parker are like, give me the keys. You have the car keys to the driver. The driver has the car keys and he's like tending to Jessica because that's his daughter. And so then they're like, throw the keys, throw the keys, right? We need to take him to the hospital. 15 minutes. And so then he's like, okay. And so he throws the keys, but it lands near where the dude, the bunker dude and the new housekeeper are fighting. And eventually, the housekeeper kills the bunker dude, right? The mother killed yeah. the hot bunker dude? Yeah. And the keys are underneath him, and he's dying right now. Yeah. Like, he's, like, kind of still breathing, but dying. And then they have to go get the keys, right? So the husband, Mr. Park, comes over, and he, he goes, okay. And so he has to move his body to get the keys. Now, mind you, I don't think there's a shower in the bunker. And so he's moving the body, and he goes, and then grabs the keys with the other hand. He looked disgusted. Yeah, like, oh, this is a really strong smell. So he's still caring about the smell at this yeah, moment. Yeah. God. And so then he moves away, and as he's moving away, the driver, I don't know, something clicked in him where he lost it and goes and stabs and kills Mr. Park for no reason. Yeah. Because he saw Mr. Pa Park yeah. doing that, so that triggered him. Mm -hmm. That is really weird. And then he dropped the knife and everyone's screaming and he ran away. Now flash forward to probably months later and Kevin wakes up from the hospital. Oh, so it seems he's alive. that yeah, and it seems that the entire Park family, the remainder of it, the husband died, you know, but the mom and the two kids, they moved away from that house and everyone on the news is looking for the dude his dad. And he has no idea where his dad is. He's just confused. And so he's like, okay, this is really strange. He's trying to recover when all of a sudden he's like, you know, sometimes I like to go up onto the hill because I get a good view of the house. Oh. And so he went up onto the hill. And the one thing about the bunker room is they have buttons, like electrical outlets down there yeah. that you can press a button and it'll turn on the light in one of the hallways. So you press it and it turns on. In the bunker, you can control lights yeah. outside. Uh -huh. oh. And so um, he's just looking at the house one day and all of a sudden he sees the light just flash weirdly. But it's not just like da 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 da. It's like a weird code. And this guy used to be like a Cub Scout or something. And so he's writing down the code and he realized it's Morse code. And so he goes to the library and tries to decipher it. And it seems that his dad is in the bunker. And the house was really hard to sell. He said that was a really hard time because he was hiding in the bunker. Now there's a German family that had just moved to Korea that lives there. But the housekeeper lives there all the time. So it, he risks his life to go into the kitchen to steal food. But he's just trying not to lose his mind in the bunker and stuff like that. Now here's the problem. You think that 
he knows where he is now. He can go get him, but he can't because he's wanted. Huh. How, where can he safely hide now? At least there, you don't have lots of like cops breaking into these people's homes. You know, he's in a bunker. You know, and so then he decides to write his dad a letter in Morse code. Probably just more of like a for himself because there's no way he can get it to his dad. And it's just as he's reading what he's writing, you see a, a series of events happen. And he's saying, "Dad, I don't know how long it's going to take, but I'm going to get my college degree. I'm going to go to the best university, like I said I would always do. And I don't know if I'm going to get married, but whatever it is, in a couple years I'm going to work my ass off, and I'm going to ask a realtor to show me that house, and then I'm going to buy that house. And once I buy that house," Mom and I will be waiting up at the front because Jessica died, by the way. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. <laughs> Jessica's dead. Yeah, and so he said, Mom and I will be out in the front of the house, and all you have to do is open the bunk room door and just walk up the stairs. That's creepy, bro. He is it's not really... walking up no stairs. Okay, and so then he's like, all you have to do is walk up the stairs, and then you see him walk up the stairs and hug the family in this empty house because they just bought the house. So they did it. And so you're like, damn, this was a good movie, rags to riches, right? But no, because then it cuts to Kevin writing this in the basement. In the bunker. His old house, the where they live. Oh, so Kevin still got his house. Yeah. So I read a lot of like long, in-depth people breaking down what the director said it was about, you know. And so the That's ending. That's it. That's the yeah. end. Yeah. And the ending could be deciphered in two ways. You have some people deciphering it as a feel-good ending, where he wrote this letter, he's gonna go on to do this, and you even saw the scene. You know whether it was a daydream of this happening, so maybe it will happen.、Yeah. And then you have a lot of people saying, "Well, everybody, especially in Korea, has someone in a bunker." Like you have this crazy dream of like becoming so wealthy that you buy this twenty million dollar mansion in Korea, you know. But Korea is one of the countries where it's really hard to become self-made like millionaires. They don't have too many. So they're saying that everybody kind of have this impossible dream. Yeah, but it's like, always just gonna be a dream. Whoa, that is so sad. So it's like a little different. Like not saying America is easy, but like you always hear about like America. Well, these days you hear about China as well being like the place where you can much, be. Still much, much, much harder. Let's, yeah, let's be like、real. the place where you can be a self-made millionaire, right? But in Korea, like keep in mind, it doesn't work like that. So like I feel like if this was an American movie, maybe it would have been more of a feel-good movie at the end. In Korea, it's like that sh- ain't happening. Boo boo. That is just a dream. Yeah, so that's why it's very weird to see how everybody deciphers. Is it、uh, weird? That is true. Yeah, because when I saw it, I was like, "Oh, like he got it." And then I started reading about like these people who were writing about like after hearing the director's side and stuff, and it's just straight up, it was just a dream. But like, I I I, I agree too because、yeah. it's to own a house. Yeah. In Asia, I mean, in China too, it's yeah unbelievable. Yeah. So it's I feel like it's harder to. I don't know. It's like me saying that my dad is stuck in like a freaking fifty million dollar mansion because I feel like that house in Korea is tens of millions, you know.、No. And then being like, "See you in a couple years, Dad." <laughs> you know, it's、yeah. like, okay, <laughs> yeah. But it's weird because this movie is weird. You don't have that stereotypical horrendous rich family.、Mm. You kind of almost have it flipped,、mm. where you almost kind of don't like the other family more. Which is very rare. Why is it called parasite? Because they're parasites. They wanted to just leech off of this family. Oh, they're calling out the poor family. Yeah. Holy moly. So it's just weird.、Uh. I think that's why a lot of people liked it because most movies are the opposite way. Right. You hate the rich people. That's what I went into the movie thinking I was going to hate the rich people.、Mm-hmm. But then you end up kind of having you don't have a lot of sympathy for them. It doesn't make you like them, but it makes you feel like they didn't really deserve that at all. Like there was nothing inherently gross about them. Like this thing is gross, but I think the reason that they did that、mm. is this is what I read. I don't know、yeah. if it's true. Yeah, is that most people can somewhat relate to that, whereas when you have this really really well-off family and they have these really really weird struggles, you don't really relate. But most people have had. You don't do this, but you've had instances where you've walked by maybe someone who is homeless. And you've、oh, noticed the scent. Yeah, I see. I see. Damn, this is deep. Yeah. So that's why I think they based it off. I mean, the I walk by mango and tiger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mango! 
<laughs> yeah. Stop farting. Yeah. So that that's why I think it was less of like I'm just so rich, but more like something that a lot of people notice is yeah. scent. That's a good movie. Yeah, it's an intense one. Let、that's、me know what you guys、movie. think in the comments. Do you think that it was that wrong? Do you think that he had enough to be triggered to kill someone? I mean, I don't think you ever have a reason to kill someone. So, yeah, but, but do you think like do you feel for them at all or not really? Let me know in the comments. And I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.